Hello and welcome to Moves and Tea. I'm your host, as always, Edward Jones, and generally, of course, it's my co-host, Miss Kim Lowe. Hello. Tonight's featured director is Karen Kusawa, as we check out her 2000 debut film, Girl Fight, featuring another debut in the form of Michelle Rodriguez as a troubled teenager from Brooklyn who ch- channels her aggression to training to become a boxer, both to the, the disapproval of her father, as well as prospective trainers and competitors in a very much a male-dominated sport. So, um, as I said, Ron, tonight um, we're looking at the second of our female directors for this season, where we're celebrating the work of um, female directors. In particular, those who are responsible for some of the more interesting films of the last couple of decades or so. Uh, we obviously looked at our previous episode at um, Clueless, and tonight we're looking at a very different sort of high school movie um, as we look at Girl Fight from 2000. Um, the film itself is a was both written and directed by Karen Kusawa. Um, and funded uh, by Joan Sales, her former mentor, uh, who she previously worked as an assistant for. Um, he provided the the whole uh, funding for the film to the grand total of $1 million. So, um, but Kev, I mean, opening thoughts on Girl Fight. I mean, obviously this is a very different film to the previous one we looked at, I mean both for high school movies but we've gone from the glamour of Beverly Hills to sort of like the absolute slums of Brooklyn with uh, this film Well I mean Girl Fight is is fun I guess I mean it's it's it reminds me a little of, it's really just a a, a movie about making the impossible or chasing your dreams or or something like that you know against all odds type of thing and i mean it's it's fun i mean we're obviously this is i think this is probably before uh million dollar baby and it's a much smaller film than obviously million dollar baby which had a lot of a lot of more famous people playing <laughs> in the movie. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, when you look at Million Dollar Baby, I mean, it's Clint Eastwood, it's um, Hilary Swank, obviously in an Oscar-winning role. And yeah, it, exactly. But in, in reality, if you think about Girl Fight, it's pretty much the same thing, but in a more... Um, I don't know. I always, When I was watching it, I felt a little bit like I was watching Step Up just instead of, <laughs> instead of watching... Uh, which is not a bad thing for me because I like yeah. Step Up. Uh, but it it had that kind of like feeling of you know like you had an idea of how the movie was gonna go, but um, there was a little bit of romance, a little bit of chasing your dreams, bad things are going to happen, like a little hurdles for you to get through, and that sort of thing. But I mean, it's I like Girl Fight. I think it was it was a it was it was a movie that fitted Michelle Rodriguez really well. And I, I think because of that, it it, it 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 works because of that. Definitely so. I mean, I can see the sort of the comparisons here between this and Step Up. I mean, obviously, instead of dance fighting, they're actually fighting. But you've obviously got the romance and chasing your dreams and obstacles to overcome, as you said already. Um, for myself, it was a great relief that I wasn't actually watching Step Up and watching this instead. But I agree, this is an absolutely fantastic film, and more interestingly, it's a very good debut for Kusama. I mean, herself as a director, she's got a very sort of feminist voice to her work, and I think that certainly shines through here as she establishes the first of the many strong female leads that she's featured throughout her work, be it through original projects or just if she's directing other people's work um, such as like with like Aunt Flux and uh, even Jennifer's Body uh, both of, she's featured a wide variety of, of strong female leads while at the same time constantly finding new ways to shoot off the beaten track and when you look at this film I could have sworn like the first time I saw this that this is like down in somewhere like Mexico or uh, somewhere down down south I would never assume this is Brooklyn until I watched it tonight and I was like is that the Twin Towers there it's like what the Twin Towers doing in Mexico <laughs> and then I was obviously when you look at the uh, synopsis it's like no they're in Brooklyn and this is a completely different side to New York than we're used to seeing I mean yes we're obviously used to seeing the projects as we get to see in this film but 
it's a different class of people because normally when we look at the lower side of uh, Brooklyn, it's normally sort of like the white kid hustlers or it's sort of like the black kids and things. So it's just like, you know, getting that sort of street view like you see on things like The Wire. Um, so it's kind of nice to actually see a completely different group of kids um, sort of struggling to struggling through the sort of fight and in their own way making it so it, it's interesting because you're watching this this movie and in reality i mean at this point we're we're 20 years into this movie so a lot of the faces here which aren't as familiar are more familiar now um just like the guy playing her brother is ray san diego and he's in ash versus evil dead yep. The, the TV series. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot the name for a moment. Um, and and you know, you, I I don't know. I don't know. Like the, I don't know the other guy. The, some of the people look really familiar, and I don't know who they are. Um, I didn't really look it up. But it, it's nice because I mean, obviously, at this point, where I think in in the two thousands, we had a lot of these type of movies where it was girls getting into all these sport movies. So we had movies like. Uh, ben did like Beckham was around that time, I think. And then we had Whip It. And it's it's all their their own kind of category where you have these strong female leads where they're they're young females who are kind of finding their their way and finding their passion of things that usually people would assume uh, kind of associate with boys or, or, or that sort of thing. And, I mean, boxing is definitely one of those things that are quite fun. I mean, we had just a really great chat about wrestling. I don't know when that episode was coming out, but Came we had a really great this. chat about wrestling before. <laughs> yeah, on so. our previous episode, I mean, we obviously talked about uh, David Arquette's uh, documentary, You Cannot Kill David Arquette, which uh, was, was a really interesting insight into, in, as you said, into the world of re into professional wrestling. And yeah. I think in many ways we get the same thing here. I mean, this is sort of like the absolute grind level, the same way that we saw Arquette wrestling in sort of like backyard federations and just the absolute bottom indie levels of wrestling. We get to essentially see that here because when you look at um, the gym, and they, they don't even have a ring. They have basically four posts and a mat that uh, <laughs> that, that Hector's um, gym's got set up. Like, all the equipment's pretty much busted, so you see, like, the helmets and all, like, taped up with uh, gaffer tape, and the gloves are pretty much all the same situation. And yet, these are young, hungry fighters, and a lot of these kids are finding their way out of delinquency and gangs and violence through challenging themselves into boxing, which is something you hear time and time again with people who like suffer like um, aggression issues and um, getting sort of in trouble with fights that they take up something like boxing and martial arts, something that forces them to channel aggression um, as where we're doing. And this is what we see, especially in the case of uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character, Diana, who's, Basically, she's this tomboy. She's this absolute tough girl who's like constantly getting into fights. Uh, she's got a very sort of problematic home life. I don't want to say it's a, a trouble sort of home life where her mother has died. Her father's kind of like a very sort of tough love drunk. Um, and she's sort of been sort of like forced to sort of step into the uh, parent role. But at the same time, she's like constantly getting into fights with like the, the popular girls because she's got a very sort of headstrong attitude and it's through boxing she sort of finds just this real sort of channel of outlet for her aggression and at the same time it really sort of helps improve her in many uh, other ways as well through the intense sort of training that she has to constantly sort of put herself through I think it really channels her character because her character is more of I don't know if it's because of the family situation like you talked about or or whatnot, but she the reason she gets into the fights is because she's defending her friend. She she's making she's being very protective of the people she cares about, which is not too many, <laughs> as we can see in the movie. Um, she's not an easy person to get along with, but she's she has that sort of personality where she's very insistent and she'll make something happen if she really wants it, and that that's exactly how you know, this starts for her. And she gets into this boxing, and it it helps her through a lot of 
the problems she's having. She, uh, it, it, from, you know, the little conversations she has, school seems to be sorting, seems to be settling down for her, like things are working out in school better. And then uh, she's fighting less with the people around her, mostly because she's spending less time at school anyways. Um, but at the same time, she has this this better fitness and all this training is really paying off for her, uh, both on, you know, like, a, a, I guess, a physical and healthy level. And but also in terms that mentally she's in a better place. And and it helps when I think it really helps when she she starts challenging these other people and then. She meets one of the up and rising fighters, Adrian, who she seems to have an eye on right from the beginning when he has girls visiting him and stuff. Um, well, girls, a girl mm. visiting him. <laughs> and and you, you really get a lot when usually you have these you know, other movies which show this kind of uh, this kind of this kind of relationship, I guess, this kind of friendship and they would be right away. You can see these interests and sparks and it gets really quick. But and not that it's not quick here. <laughs> but I'm just saying that a lot of it is they spend a lot of time talking and you learn a lot about these two people through like they really seem to be having something like it really adds to their character in their conversation. It's not just a bunch of, you know, sex and kissing and, <laughs> and intimacy and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> That's true. I mean, this is a very unique <laughs> romantic situation that we have um, here in here in the film. It's the fact that we have two people who are absolutely dedicated to their cause, which is fighting. I mean, the fact that we have what uh, leads into what should have been the potential sex scene, but no, he turns it down because he needs the uh, testosterone to ensure that he's making weight for his fight, and that he's just, they go on a on a date and he's there ordering like the salad and the. And the soup, and she's there packing away like the big burger and chips and and uh, whatnot because she's not watching her weight. Um, and he's like, "No, I I've got to keep weight," which is just really absolutely fascinating um, sort of situation to to have. Um, at the same time, we also have this is like a romantic a, a romantic angle where at the end they have to face each other in a boxing match, which I have to say, there's not many. <laughs> many romantic uh, movies where you have the two love interests battle it out in a boxing ring. I, again, it's, it builds into this absolutely fantastic finale where it comes down to <clears throat> to um, do they sort of like their, their emotions get in the way or they do they sort of see each other as the competitors that they are because they're both on the sort of same level and at the same time Dan is having to sort of felt this prejudice because she's a a woman in a male dominated sport especially at at this sort of time and where they're based I mean there's so few women that she basically has to train and she has to spar with with boys there's no other women really for her to fight against and the few that there are are basically all being pushed into sort of pro fights after with much more speed than the guys are just because they need to fill out the division more so she ends up in this unique situation where she actually has to turn up and and face her her boyfriend and um at the same time about to convince him that uh, she's a legitimate opponent that you know she isn't going to hold back and that he shouldn't be holding back even in fact it would be more of an insult to her if he actually if he held back or like threw the fight in her sort of favor so it's a really unique situation that we end up on this for this sort of like big finale really is because normally you would have like the big bad for her to sort of defeat like you know the the unworthy big champion, but uh, in this case, it's her boyfriend that she has to go and face down. Which I just thought, it's, even now watching it now, was still such a great um, setup for the finale. Yeah, I mean, in reality, it's all about respect, right? There, there's a whole lot of you know, respect for the sport, respect for each other as opponents, and it also brings in the fact that probably you shouldn't be in the same career path. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, I mean this. This really opens up this this conversation about about I guess equality in general, right? You you think about this sport where it's 
it's mo in a male dominated situation in in at least at this time. I'm not sure. It, it's still fairly male dominated, I think. Uh, I'm not a boxing expert, so I don't know. <laughs> I'd say that like uh, UFC. I mean, the it, the the lines are sort of shifting. I mean, like in a lot of sports now, I think women's um, sports are really sort of being being pushed to the forefront. But with as I said, with few people who are just sort of like pushing the boundaries. I mean, um, mm-hmm. such as like Ronda Rousey for UFC. Um, in boxing, yeah. certainly there's there's a number of female boxers out there whose names I can't remember because I'm not a boxing fan. But if we want to talk about women's wrestling, I mean, there's certainly the as an absolute <laughs> revolution within wrestling within the last three years, they've really sort of been pushing um, with people. As I said, Ronda Rousey came across and made gave us our first wi- all women main event at uh, WrestleMania. You've got the Oh, the female horsemen, so people like Charlotte Flair and Becky uh, Lynch and Bailey and Sasha Banks, who just basically went on this four woman revolution. And that's without even getting to like everyone else who sort of like come in, like Tony Storm or Eo Shirai or uh, the Pirate Princess Carrie Sane. So, and I'm just probably going to go for a whole other rant about wrestling. So I'm just going to stop right now on that. But yes, um, when this film came out, women weren't getting the same sort of respect in sports. As yeah. Have, and I think. Yeah, but I think it's 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 a nice conversation to have because obviously this is kind of a double a double edged sword because you're talking about a conversation about whether he should consider her because he doesn't want to fight her because he she's she's his girlfriend for one <laughs> and he doesn't want he feels like it's beating up women and they don't feel he doesn't feel right about doing it but at the same time we're having this conversation about yeah if he was in the ring with someone else would he would he be a would he be comfortable fighting another girl but the reality is he you know through one of the conversations before the fight we have a good grasp that he doesn't want to fight her you know obviously for 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 those reasons but at the same time there's this hurdle that that i think they the the male competitors are having with with females in in the in the ring right because they don't view them as, they view them as kind of maybe the weaker sex maybe of all these other things that they it's it's kind of like um things that that people believe uh i guess or, or at this point is more commonly known to other people right so you don't i think it's more accepting that and when he finally decides to kind of embrace the situation during the fight we start seeing you know we start seeing a a balance and power between them because they're both very they're they're both good fighters the reason he lost is because he was too soft he wasn't as decisive in the beginning like he didn't really pull out all the stops in the beginning and and i think that that's what makes it uh, a great final scene because we kind of see this we kind of see this relationship but at the same time we we kind of see them being professionals in the ring professional boxers and that kind of sets them apart because it it, it kind of like you can be professionals in your own career but at the same time it it also sets up the situation at the end where at the where the big finale whether whether they'll be able to still be together in a relationship after this fight. Yeah, it's, a, it's certainly an interesting twist, as we said already. And I think there's more... What I like as well about this is the fact that there's more conflict between them about whether she's the legitimate opponent because he feels that it's going to affect yeah. his record. And as she points out, this yeah. is amateur record and it won't count, obviously, once he goes pro because he's essentially on the verge of going going pro and it's this sort of fight that's really going to sort of help push him into the mainstream um mm-hmm. so to obviously be seen as fighting a, a girl he feels that it may sort of damage his record and i feel the fact it's not it's never really about the fact oh you're my girlfriend that's why i can't fight you it's like no it's because you're a, a female competitor it's not unbalanced because you know men are stronger than than women are and mm-hmm. it's a completely different sort of um set up really and oh the, this is like the, the whole time Dan is constantly trying to battle through for this sort of perception of, of women in the sport and to sort of earn a place I mean the fact that when she goes to 
Hector's gym initially, and she wants to be like wants to be trained. They're sort of like you know, why don't you go and take a nice ex <laughs> nice uh, aerobics class or something? It's sort of like boxing isn't for you. And she's like, right from the start, she's like, no, if I'm going to train, I'm training to compete. I'm not training for to do it for exercise. I want to to compete and be the same as everyone else at the at the gym. And I think it's once you get into it and the fact that Hector does never treat her as being any different because there's so many scenes in the open you think oh he's just blessing her because she's a she's a girl and it's like no it's not it's because you your attitude stinks it's not like because you <laughs> think this is going to come easy to you and it doesn't come easy and you just got to keep going at it so I love the fact that once it gets into the training it's never about you know her winning over her he yeah. her trainer as being like this actual competitor it's just more about her getting her mindset though that of how to be a competitor so but i think it's it's really interesting because at the beginning when when he he encounters you know hector and asks to fight and, and asks to learn how to box the first thing he says is that you know girls don't have the same power as boys and that's why they can't mm. box and right away when but then he you're yeah, obviously like you said he treats her like an equal and then he eventually starts seeing this opportunity where i guess it, it's kind of a different opportunity than what ha is for the boys because he starts having this conversation in at the at this party that maybe because the girls i think the gravity because they're short they're smaller have this has a different gravity so it's it's better like they fight better yeah um uh, we do have a different yeah. sort of uh gravity to base you, yeah. you're not as uh and you'll find this especially in things like uh Derby and stuff you're more sort of of central uh in your in your gravity yeah. base so it's easier for you to to take hits than guys who are just all top heavy yeah and and it, it's really great because I love that I love the scene in the middle where I don't know if it was before or after this whole gravity talk, but but she we have this scene about her in class and they're the professors professors the the teachers talking about like thermodynamics <laughs> <laughs> and then at the same time they parallel it with boxing and her training and I love that part I thought I thought it was so great. <laughs> Now, I just want to talk a little bit about Michelle Rodriguez. As I said, she was uh, a breakout role for Rodriguez. Um, originally, when they were cast in the film, they had looked at other sort of like professional actors to play the role of Diana, but they found that um, Gustavo found that they were all sort of very sort of feminized and polished, and instead she decided to train a, an, un a, an untrained actor, uh, which she obviously found in Rodriguez. And I love to think that uh, Rodriguez got cast just because of that thing she does with her eyes. That sort of downward, <laughs> up, where she looks, stares downwards and then looks upwards slowly. It's all in the eyes with Rodriguez, so. And this feels like very much the sort of role that she was born to play, because she does have a very much a, a tomboy, sort of tough girl edge to her. And that's essentially what Diana is. She's the she's the tomboy who with or the tough girl uh of the school who's you know just needs to be refocused in a way and obviously that's what um her journey journey does so but um rodriguez herself she was not, wasn't a boxer uh so ended up having to had to do like six days a week training for four months in preparation for the filming um, as did uh, Santiago Douglas, who plays a love interest Adrian as well. So it's really, I think she really sort of uh, portrays herself well as a as a boxer. I think it both of them really came across as they look legitimate enough in in the uh, ring, certainly. So. Mm hmm. I agree. Yeah, no, but I mean, Michelle Rodriguez fits the role really well. I mean, she's kind of you know she she she's. She has her own sense of prettiness, but at the same time, she's also very strong. You always feel like she's kind of like this very, like, she's she's not your, like, typical skinny Hollywood actress, pretty much. No, she definitely isn't. She has a bit more build. She has kind of, like, the broader shoulders and that sort of thing. And, and, and it, you know, there's an appeal to a character like that as well. It makes her feel very strong. It makes her feel very, very, you know. And, and it, it's great because it, it fits, fits her in this kind of, like, she already has the body type for her, like a boxer type of thing. 
So, yeah. I mean, I do agree. The eye thing really helps. <laughs> She has this kind of like it makes her look very vicious, and she and I and I think for a lot of the movies that she does, she always does that eye thing. Anyway. It's right, first shot of the film. It's the first shot of the film, and yeah, uh, exactly. It's also the cover of the DVD as well. So it's like we know we know what the selling points like really early on with this film. So, <laughs> um, and, and again, she shows that she can handle herself in a fight when she beats up uh, the queen bee chick with the bad hair. So. I don't know what's going on with that nineties hair look she was going on with those. Ah. I don't know. I mean we we've had back to back nineties high school and both of them have both of the movies have shown some real funky hair. We right? also have a that shot that's mirrored, uh, that we got in both Clueless and Go Fight though. When we have the, the gym sequence, if you look at the girls lined up against the fence, it's a real startling similar shot that we have and if you play those two yeah. scenes sort of like side by side and you see obviously in Clueless you've got all the money and power and glamour of the Beverly Hills system and then you see like the Brooklyn version where their tracks got holes in it and everyone's sort of like poor and sort of like very working class and from the projects it's such a startling comparison to like almost an identical scene for scene shot um it just really amused me when we when i sealed that sort of lineup there and made me wonder like how many other films is that sort of like gym sequence um you know line against the the fence of the shot being used so yeah we're gonna put a whole other rabbit hole like uh, the guys over exploding helicopters so <laughs> but you just like focus on one detail where you're carrying detail in films and obviously they love chopper fireballs and for myself it's going to be just like people in gym class <laughs> it might actually not be so much <laughs> so many movies I have <laughs> I just wouldn't need to, wouldn't need to, to start like going for all the sort of high school movies and to see how many like have like gym class sequences and see how they shoot them also i'm not gonna lie when you were saying that i was already flipping through teenage movies in my mind <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just like okay did they go to gym in american pie no they didn't <laughs> they didn't think so hey about you i think they went to a gym though no, that was track so yeah it's got a whole other I've got like a whole plan now for this evening now once we finish this recording so um Let's talk about the the actual boxing sequences because they're obviously a key component of the film. Because um, some obviously shooting this as an independent feature hasn't got sort of money to do the sort of high um, sort of setup flair that a lot of other boxing movies have. And I still feel that in many ways the sort of power of these film the the actual fight sequences comes across. Whether we're looking from the spectator view as we see in the early matches, where we're following the action from outside the ring, or when we get cheap when Dan sort of becomes more sort of adapt as a fighter. In which case, uh, the cinematographer Patrick Cady uh, used camera rigs that basically allowed the actors to hit him or to allow the camera to mimic the fact that you know the idea of someone being hit. Uh, so we have those lovely POV sort of uh, shots there, which I think really sort of helps sell the action. But I think that the all of the boxing sequences they look really great, even if they haven't got the you know the the high budget flair of something like Raging Bull or um, Cinderella Man or Southpaw. So, but I don't I don't really think boxing really like boxing movie. Do you really need such a high budget? I mean, it it seems like it. It seems like it's a pretty grounded sport. <laughs> it so. depends what sort of league you want to sell it at. I mean, obviously, when things like yeah. Rocky and stuff, I mean, he's like a, a major prize fighter, so you need to, like, fill a auditorium full of people, which, you obviously, if you've only got a million dollars, you can't exactly do. You can manage a few people yeah, in a gym. But, in, but, in, but in, when you're talking about this one, we're, we're talking about... We're, re we're really in this world of amateur Yes, boxing. exactly. I mean, obviously, Adrian is heading into the professional leagues, but he's not, but he's still amateur. So, you know, with their setup and with what they have, it's it's very, very basic. And, but I mean, all the boxing scenes carry out really, really well. Um, I mean, whether with everyone, with everyone that she ends up fighting with, and even when she, she fights the, the other female boxer, um, it's all it's all really it's all really good. I mean, I as I said, I 
well, who am I to judge boxing? I barely watch boxing except for in movies. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no sense of like what is what is actual boxing match. I've seen maybe like a quarter of a match at one point in my life. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not exactly I'm not exactly an expert at it, but it it satisfied me when I was watching. That's what that's what you want to what you want really from a from a sports movie. Whether you're a fan of it or not, whether we're looking at boxing or we're looking at like baseball and like something like a league of their own, this idea that you want to be able to draw the audience into the action that's happening on screen and make it so that they can follow it, even if they're not like a huge fan. Um, which obviously went something like League of Their Own. I don't know the first thing about baseball, but I was really enjoyed that movie. Um, and when you get into like the final sort of game and you're sort of on the edge of your seat, like waiting for that final sort of pitch to go out. And I think that's the sort of key thing when it comes to sports movies and certainly sports books, I guess. Um, you want to have this idea that you, you can sell the sport to someone who doesn't know about the sport and at the same time still make it appealing to someone who does know about these things so but yeah i really i i enjoyed um i certainly enjoyed this one i think certainly even even though there were sort of like on the amateur sort of circuit here for for boxing i think it's still really sort of exciting i mean they don't it doesn't sort of go into those big sort of dramatic um sort of fight moments and saves it all really for the end when as we said before, you get this really unique situation. It's Diana versus taking on her boyfriend. I mean, how many other romantic movies do the the two two romantic leads face each other off? Not just as you know romantic love interests, but as the same time viewing each other as uh, sort of equal competitors. So, so it's kind of nice the fact that you got got it, a film that works in both those. You know, people who are viewing each other as as opponents and at the same time as uh, having the romantic connection as well and ha having them try to walk the line between the two which obviously for Dana is less of a problem because it's just another guy not wanting to fight her whereas for Adrian it's this whole sort of thing of like it's not just a girl it's also my, my girlfriend and we'll use that in the loosest terms because he likes to play the field but in kind of a charming kind of way <laughs> Well, I mean, at this point, when they before, right before they fight, he's pretty much admitted that he loves her, kind of thing, right? They're in, they're they're pretty much they've gone steady right before this fight <laughs> got, you know, organ or arranged. So, um, I mean, it, I don't know. It, it's it, it it's <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> Just uh, Adrian is an interesting character. I don't know. I mean, but at oh, but it's also. I guess it also fits kind of like a a certain I don't know I don't know if you call it a stereotype or just how guys how teenage guys are crafted in this kind these kind of movies uh, where you know they they seem to be very wishy washy about things <laughs> they have their own kind of I don't know it seems like they put it out where it's like a reputation they need a certain type of girl type yeah. of thing or whatever and. You know, like a girl they could take out, and then there's the girl that they like to be with, but doesn't don't want to admit type of thing. Oh, definitely. And I mean, if you if you were in Adrian's shoes, I mean, Diana's a strong character. <laughs> like, she's a strong woman. Like in in her mentally and and just in how she talks and how she is, and you really need like this type of this type of girl probably is a little bit, I guess tougher to be with <laughs> yeah i mean she's certainly not no damsel in distress really is she she's not like able to hold her yeah. own so i think if you're going to get involved with her um you kind of got to be able to sort of hold uh, your she, own and i think she's probably more stubborn more headstrong that sort of thing not not like those things are bad things but i mean in 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 sometimes you know when when you're when you're in a relationship with someone these this type of girl is never easy to deal with compared to, you know, maybe someone who's more, more like, um, the girl that he was playing around with, uh, Karina, yeah. I think her name is. And, and yeah, I mean, Karina's more of the girly girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Where she's probably gonna let it all be, 
you know, like just just go with the flow type of feel. Like whatever you want, whatever you want to be happy, whatever type of thing. Not so not so complex. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean she she comes to the, like the gym all sort of doled up and I think as he as he says himself, I think she's more interested in in where he's heading as a boxer than him. Um I think exactly. she's sort of like trying to uh, secure her meal ticket in this situation so because obviously if he becomes a bit mm. he becomes a, a professional fighter he's obviously got the potential to make a, a lot of money the same way that you know if he would join the NBA or the um, other professional <laughs> sports organizations so I'm not sports <laughs> not as big sports fan myself so I can't really say any <laughs> so yeah if he went pro then he would obviously uh, it, it's a good meal ticket to attach yourself to and a way out of the project certainly so but no I think this is absolutely a, a fascinating debut film and one that uh, well deservedly marked both Kusama out as a director to watch as well as having uh, Rodriguez, providing Rodriguez with a breakout role as well uh, the film itself would go on to win both the Cannes Film Festival for the Foreign Youth Film Award of the Youth. Um, for <clears throat> um, she would also win uh, the Grand Prix uh, de Cinema Independent Spirit as well. Ah. The Grand Prix de Cinema Independent at the Deville American Film Festival as well. So the film was certainly well received with uh, Rodriguez also breaking, picking up the breakthrough actor at the Gotham Awards as well. So really this, both Rodriguez and Kusama came out extremely well out of this and it sort of set them up as names to watch whether as, as an actress or as a director and I think really it while the film sort of um, marked Kusama out as a as a director of note, it would really be late, sort of later in her in her sort of filmography that she'd really sort of get get the notices because she went from doing this to doing Aeon Flux in two thousand and five, which was just a absolute dumpster fire of a movie, and then in two thousand and nine she does Jennifer's Body and uh, The Invitation in twenty fifteen before doing uh, mm-hmm. contribution to XX in 2017 and more recently Destroy It in 2018. So really, apart from that sort of minor stumble with Aeon Flux, I mean, she's constantly, she's really sort of been on the up and up as a director and also done work in television as well. So um, I know that there's many people out there who are just absolutely obsessed with like the, uh, like, Evelyn and Christine over at the Feminine Critique are huge fans of Kusama's work and I think it's always interesting when she does do something because she's not like one of those directors you can sort of pin down and say oh this is the sort of film we're going to have um, even though she's done a lot of work recently within sort of like the horror films she's also proven herself more than capable of doing films as well with things like Destroyer which gave us uh, Ugly Duck Nicole Kidman doing something very different as well mm. um, but Fair of viewing, if you like this one, is there anything you want to sort of pair with it at all? Well, I mean, I had a few that I had talked about yep. already, so, you know, obviously, you can go for something, like, a little bit more high budget. <laughs> you would pair it up with Million Dollar Baby. Uh, you can pair it with other movies that are um, young female leads uh, chasing a dream in a more, I guess, male-dominated kind of... Um, or kind of rough sport type of thing, and we have Bend It Like Beckham, or we have Whip It. Um, I mean, if you want another boxing movie, I guess you can you can always pair it with, you know, there's a million boxing movies out there. Rocky, Southpaw, whatever. Um, Southpaw in particular, I would say, because Southpaw, no one ever seems to talk about Southpaw, and it's a really great boxing movie with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal absolutely bulking up to monster state uh, sort of size to uh, convincingly play a boxer, so... Yeah, I mean, I have... I like Southpaw overall. I have some little issues with it. Um, I mean, I, I, I talked about it in the review. I don't remember a lot of the movie right now, probably because mm-hmm. I had issues with it and I don't remember it a lot. It wasn't as memorable to me as it was to you. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, but I mean, Southpaw in general, it's... it's, um, it's it feels a little bit more in line with a movie like this kind of thing. It, it would be a really good pairing as well. Um, 
I don't know. I think th- I think that's about it. I, I I I'm sure there's a lot of movies out there. Obviously, you know, I talked about Step Up, so Step Up could be a really good match for this yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if if we were to kind of pair it with say another Kusama film, I would definitely say I haven't seen any of the other ones before, but I mean, The Invitation is a really good movie by her. It's a completely different movie from this one. It's it's a very outstanding thriller. Um very quiet, very subtle, uh there are lots of lots of yep. twists it's it's a truly truly great film i mean uh you, if you watch this one and then you go and watch the invitation you can really see this this improvement like how Sh- kusama has grown as a director for sure for sure um i mean obviously for myself and just intent to handle the sort of boxing side of things i mean yes obviously you've, you've got the rocky movies although i would say that the two creed films are more in line with this film than uh than, than rocky's journey as a boxer and for myself if you want to watch the absolute standout uh boxing movie then you just watch de niro's fantastic performance in raging bull with scorsese's classic um and uh, the sort of more off the beaten track, you've got Cinderella Man starring Russell Crowe as a depression era boxer as well, which is uh, is really fantastically shot and uh, one that's definitely worth checking out as well. So, but yeah, as you said, Kim, I mean, yeah, when it comes to boxing movies, there's a sort of dime a dozen. You can even watch like the yeah. Barbara Streisand uh, boxing movie, the main event, if you really want to. <laughs> Well, I mean, I just I just watched one from I just watched Johnny Cho's latest movie, um, Chasing Dream, which is also a partial boxing movie. <laughs> it's also a sport movie, which which would be a really good pairing for this one, seeing as I paired this one with Step Up, because that one is kind of like a mesh of sport as in yeah. boxing and a musical. So it's an interesting one because <laughs> it has that sign of same feeling as this one. Uh, in terms of the relationship of the two characters and then it, in terms of just chasing your dreams, that sort of thing. So, uh, I mean, I don't think it's widely distributed. It's probably still running the festival circuit at this point. Um, but, I mean, Chasing Dream is Johnny Toe's latest work and um, I don't know. There seems to be a lot of debate whether it's his, whether it's it's a good, good, good piece of cinema or not um, online, but I thought it was pretty entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just reminded me of a whole other avenue you can go down and you can look at things such like Crying Fist, again, which featuring two guys fighting their way out of their own personal strife through boxing. You've also got Shinya Tsukamoto's T- Tokyo Fist as well, uh, from 95 <laughs> as well, which, so there's many, many different avenues you can go down if you want to watch boxing movies. I mean, that could be a whole other podcast in itself. No one that I'm going to start, but it's just about saying to saying because someone else wanted to do it. Uh, there's plenty of material there if you want to just look at boxing movies, for sure. But um, that brings us end of another episode of Movies and Tea. Thank you, as always, for listening. Um, if you want to obviously catch up on our previous episodes, you can do by checking out our blog, which is moviesandteapodcast.wordpress.com. And on there, you can also find the other fun bits of writing, including our Friday Film Club, where each Friday, myself and Kim both pick a film. Sometimes it's a film theme, sometimes it's not. Either way, it's a chance for us to further explore the movies that we love and feel that uh, you should be checking out as well. Um... But uh, whether you happen to be listening to us, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave us a review, as it all helps raise the profile of the show. And uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram as well. And um, definitely uh, give us a follow there as well to make sure that you uh, keep up to date with all the latest uh, releases from myself and uh, Kim. But um, Kim, where are we going to for our next episode in this female orientated season? Yes. We're jumping to uh, a 2011 movie directed by Lynn Ramsey called We Need to Talk About Kevin, which is going to be a completely change (laughs) in genre of film (laughs) again. (laughs) Yes, uh, 2011. We get to talk about Tilda Swinton and more importantly, why she didn't get that much deserved Oscar win um, in a really fantastic adaptation of a book that I remember coming out and everyone wanting to to buy and I think it's uh, certainly <coughs> the role which really sort of finally marked Tilda Swinton as uh, an actress that we should all be taking note of. But that's obviously coming up on our next episode so hopefully you can join us for that. And um, until then, thank you as always to my co-host Kim, thank you to listening and uh, we'll be back next time to 
with We Need to Talk About Kevin. Good night. Thank you.